Oh, that's why. Oh. Yeah. My birthday is the same day as uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Oh, nice. Also, I just realized I'm not something. Promoting it all. <laughs> also, I just re. You don't want to know what I realized about that date as well? Oh, look, no, I'm, not so, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I gotta get used to Kinstone. it. Kinstone. Also, uh, Riley, you want to know something I noticed and I told Wolfhood about it and he was kind of just bursting hit, oh, burst into the laughter? What? The same day that a goofy... The same day that... The Mario, basically, the Mario movie, the upcoming Mario movie, is going to be released the exact same day as when a Goofy movie was released, you know, back in 95. Jesus. Yeah. A.K.A., and I'm telling you this in DMs. That movie reeks of 95, though. So? No, Goofy I mean, movie? it's a good time capsule of that era. era. No. Nope. I say that in a loving way, though. Son of a bitch. See, Riley? What did I see? Ah, okay. Yeah. My friend Josh, like, text, texted me the other day, and he's like, that's I'll what we're gonna celebrate ass. here. That's how we're gonna celebrate. I'm like, uh, uh, damn it! On one hand, yay! <clears throat> good movie! On the other hand, Oh god, people are going to be so angry about the Chris Pratt voice. Uh, we'll talk about that in the podcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, when it comes to a goofy movie, I just... God, what was... Uh, sorry, I had something and now I forgot. No, that's fine. This stuff mainly makes me... <laughs> I think what makes a movie so damn good is not only no! because it's just oh, <laughs> <coughs> you should have dug in the hole. I just like I didn't expect it to come back that fast. Like holy shit, dude! <laughs> oh god, um, I had such a crush on Roxanne as a kid. I mean, uh, it's... I can't blame you. Oh jeez, dude, I wasn't that close. What the fuck? And then of course it's Polly Shore. Shadow Wizzy. Leaning Tower no. of Cheese. Oh. It's the Leaning Tower of Cheese. Scrumptious. <laughs> Protect you with your life. Sure. We're busted. Wait, what? Oh, wait, Kane. Oh, anyway, um. What was I saying about the goofy movie? Yeah, Kane. But I think what also worked about, um. The movie was just again the relationship between Max and Goofy. Oh yeah, definitely. Just... That was like the the heart of the film because yeah, you can definitely see that both of them had points. Max didn't ask to be on the trip, but at the same time, Goofy just wanted to spend time with his kid because he was growing up. <laughs> oh Jesus, yeah. motherfucker, get off of me! Get off me! Piece yeah, watch shit. out for the like likes. It doesn't help either that you're not seeing that you're unable to really see them because of the because of the, of the yeah because of the fence disguise themselves yeah <clears throat> Jesus I almost like signed a death warrant there Jesus signed your death warrant oh, okay <laughs> shut up he came back in three days to kick your ass Jesus I will not take be the surprised wheel. if he does something like that <laughs> oh. I felt good. Oh, Rise is back. Yeah. Welcome back to the land of the living. You know it was an intense. Is? It's not worth it. It was the intense battle. Life you know and what... death. Mm -hmm. Good you know and evil. That... Also, since Rise is back, Ying and Yang. I, I can do this. Grabs the bird, throws him. What the fuck? Golden. Right. <laughs> Death's throwing me. You can fly! Maybe he doesn't want to. <laughs> yeah. What well, if I'm just lazy right now? You know, you that does remind me of something. Because, like, I remember at one point I was on a podcast where I was asked to talk about, like, the negative things about putting your hoop down. And, like, my issue with the episode was what everybody else hauled. And I was so upset. They're like, you can talk about that scene where uh, Fluttershy, like, talks to those two uh, ponies with, uh, over the bridge. Because everybody argues that the whole time Fluttershy could have just flown over. 
Which, first of all, that just defeats the purpose of her standing up for herself. And second, maybe she doesn't want to fly. And this is just at the expense of people. Two characters who had no courtesy to actually move their carriages, garbage carriages, over a bridge that blocks any, anyone from, well, like, walking across. Man, he yeah. really had her peeved. It's like, why the fuck <laughs> would I have to fly if these bitches would just move their damn thing? I didn't... I didn't hate the episode as people, as everyone else made it out to be. It just didn't seem that bad, but I do see down, down, some down. Of... There we oh. go. I did, I did understand some of the criticisms. Especially Mr. Enter, considering he really did not like this episode. No, that was like, that was his most hated episode of the show. My yeah. favorite, my favorite moment was when Fluttershy got the shotgun and shot him up. <sighs> I'm sorry, What? <laughs> Uh, Rise is joking. Hey, hey, hey. Stay out of my shit. My friend Josh had a tendency of always singing that song whenever he referenced that episode. For some reason. Yes, Joker, uh, I was the episode with the Minotaur. I will. Your rainbow dash. You alright? Ah, uh, no, it was Yo Applejack, you alright? Yo Applejack, you alright? <laughs> I actually read the blog of, um... You could kill somebody. Uh, Jask Apple, or, uh, Ask, Ask Jappel 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 Jappel. Apple. Yeah. yeah. That was great. Remember when MLP, when there was a flux of MLP Ask blogs? <sighs> yeah. Good times. Oh, Jesus! I mean, I joined in 2015, so... Yeah. I, huh? I still got through. I, there were so many good ones that I remember. I think there was one that was kind of interesting because it was a um, it had a scenario about what would happen if if Princess Luna gave Scootaloo and Amulet a sort of moonstone that give, gave her the ability to have bat wings. But the artist didn't really go far with it after kind of establishing Whoa. an arc for it. I see. I was pretty bummed when they just decided not to... When they just sort of said, Oh yeah, don't worry, I'm on hiatus, I'm continuing it. So what are we still doing in this dungeon? Uh, He's... looking for any remaining items. Like, this whole stream is just gonna be, like, grinding for a lot of stuff. Like, I gotta get more lows. Those bottles, ah. so I can fill them up with more, uh... Yeah, that. Okay. Balls. So... You're taking fairies hostage in bottles, you monster. I mean, if it's the fairies from Fairly Odd Paris, that's fine. Damn it! <laughs> okay, so I guess I have to go twice as high. It's gonna fly <laughs> like an eagle. Tell him to fly, fly like, like an eagle. eagle. Let my spirit <laughs> carry me. I wanna fly. Yeah, fly. Fly God. right into to the, the future. future. Feed the baby. We don't have enough to eat. Shoe the children with no shoes on the feet. Has the people living in the street? Oh, there's a solution. I gotta fly <laughs> like an eagle. Which one do you like more, the seal version or the um? Was it, what was the was the Dave Matthews band? I'm trying no, to remember. No, Steve the Miller. Steve Miller. Why did I forget Steve Miller? That that's a tough question because they all they both have their own into, like they both play in the same key and everything, but they have such a distinctive atmosphere. Like uh, with the Steve Miller band, it has more of a psycho uh, psychedelic sort of feel to it because yeah. it was the seventies, whereas the one from um, Seal the nineties. The 90s, it has more of a haunting sort of feel, like Prayer for the Dying. And more of an R&B type of thing to it. Yeah. It, it, it's sort of similar to um, Hurt by Nine, like the Hurt by Nine Inch Nails and then the Johnny Cash cover. Both of them oh, are God. great songs. You ever watch the music video for that? It's just I, like... God. I've seen the music video. It's haunting because, I mean, it was the last music video that Johnny Cash did before his passing. Yeah. How old was Johnny you... Cash at that point? I think he was uh, in his 60s? Let me look. Uh, 70s? Johnny Cash. But what I love about the you know about Johnny's cover is that he makes it more bitter like more of a of a um 
kind of just of a man accepting his, you know, his eventual fate. Whereas the original version of her was more he was about seventy one. Oh, okay. in fact, he old... is that how old Joe, uh, Joe Cocker was before he died? No, I don't think Joe Cocker was him in his seventies. Let me check. Oh, you should listen to Joe Cocker's version of "Come Together" from across the universe. I thought he did the cover of um, "A Little Help from My Friends." It was part of well, the. Well, that's movie. one of them. Okay. No, the, the the main stars did a little help with my friends, but uh, Joe Cocker or, or am I trying, did uh, the cover of um, <laughs> Come Together. Um. Also, Golden, he was actually seventy when he passed. Okay, so I was off by one year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I guess Damn, it's also too young I, though. Yeah, I think another good example of a cover of both songs being good, one being the original and the cover, is um. The man who sold the world, because you have the David Bowie version, which is David Bowie. It's fucking good. But then you have the Nirvana version, to the point where people literally think Nirvana wrote the song. Really? Yeah. I don't see that. Yeah, some people genuinely do think that Nirvana wrote The Man Who Sold the World, and even though Bowie really loved the Nirvana cover, he was a little bit irked that people kept doing that. I still mm, remember... Gotcha. Um... Because apparently I didn't know about this until, like, there was a video that explains it. The, uh, When the Levy Breaks from Led Zeppelin was a 1923 cover song. Oh, uh, yeah. If there's one thing that's kind of, like, infamous about Led Zeppelin is their tendencies of taking a lot of blues songs and not crediting them. It wasn't until, I think, like, years later that so many people came out and, like, hey, they actually took a lot of songs from... 70s artists, I mean, from, like, not 70s artists, but, like, blues artists from, like, the 20s or the 30s, and they kind of just used it without actually crediting them, crediting people. I think that was, like, one of the big, one of the big factors with, um, that. With, sorry, anyway, with, um, with, um, Stairway to Heaven. Son of a bitch. Which, which apparently one that's apparently playing that song is one of the Oh. Well, I just yeah. been not alive there. Ooh. Son of a bitch. Alright. Gotta go higher. Still not enough. Oof. What? Oh. Too many garbage during too much. You mean too much garbage? What was that about garbage? Uh, AKA the worst treatment out of the writers. Um, I can name a few. Uh, Applejack got treated dirty, especially when everybody kept calling her a background pony. God, I, I hate that shit! I hated it, too. I still remember, it, um... I forgot what it was called. It was something that Fiora hosted. And it's nothing on Fiora's part. There was somebody else. There was another member. And he was saying that it's a fact that Applejack's a background pony. Like, okay. it's just... Oh, no. bullshit. Every yeah. single time... Let me pretty much make it right here and there. Anybody who says the fucking phrase, it's a fact, when trying to stay in the opinion... Yeah, you need to grow the fuck up. Anybody who says that shit really needs to reevaluate themselves. <coughs> fuck that stuff. Excuse me. Anywho. Yeah. Anyway, um, no, Applejack is not a background pony. The problem was that she was underutilized when it well, came to certain episodes. It didn't help when a certain uh, purple unicorn entered the stage and suddenly she was the person that Twilight went through when for through everything instead of As, uh, Applejack. You know, I choke you because you like to bat to shit talk Starlight Glimmer all the time. I but like even Starlight. but even as a Starlight fan, I can admit that yeah, Starlight is in essence kind of took away the role of Applejack. Kind of took away, you know, 
Applejack being the voice of reason to Twilight sometimes. Yeah. Uh, well, like, I personally liked Starlight Glimmer. She was oh, no, funny. I love her, too. Like, even oh, no, like even before Starlight even showed up, I remember uh, season four, like, because the whole, like, background pony argument was, like, ensuing there. But when she's the center of attention, the writers have to find a reason to hit her with a stupid stick. Case in point, some pony to watch over me. Where Which... she completely ditches her job, pampers the hell out of uh, Apple Bloom. And even though she comes to rescue her um, near the end of the episode, it's entirely her fault for not doing her job. Like, if she had just left Apple Bloom alone, that would have been fine. If anything, I was expecting it to be like a Home Alone type of epi uh, episode. That where... would have been really creative if they had done that. Yeah, they did. That's what I was expecting. But then all of a sudden, helmet, 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 Applejack being stupid. Like, ugh. Like, has like... like conflicting moments where you see, like... Let's say, like, yeah. because apparently it was just in the script that, oh, um, Granny Smith is just taking a cab. Like, she would travel with them instead, and she would have to, like, right. be the voice of reason to um, Applejack, saying, like, AJ, she needs to grow up. Stop being overprotective. You know, stuff like that. Like, that would have been great. Yeah. You that had so been much amazing. great potential, and it fucking wasted itself by taking a U-turn. You know, and another thing that I really wish they could have done is just simply explain why she was overprotective of Apple Bloom. I would have personally... Ex they did explain why, it's just she was being stupidly overprotective. Like, how does she know where to put the right silverware? Like, you're worried about that? Like, she really did not respect Apple Bloom's intelligence. And yet, at it the really end of the episode, did. Apple Bloom got the short end of the stick because of Applejack coming to the rescue and everything. It's like... Applejack, none of this would have happened if you hadn't ditched your job. She, so she got off scot free, and that just that really put a bad light on her. Yeah, another big reason as to why a lot of people call AJ a background pony was Hasbro's tendency of ignoring her when it came to merchandising. Yeah. Like any single time there was merchandising for like the mates for any of the characters. AJ was barely, if ever, featured. Oops. Like, I think one of the more infamous examples was when they did the goth line of the characters where all the ponies had this sort of, like, goth appearance. They had one for at, for Fluttershy. They had one for Rainbow Dash. They had one for Rarity. They had one for Pinkie Pie. They had one for Twilight. They did not include Applejack. Instead, they threw in Princess Celestia. Oh, okay, that is not gonna, like... I was gonna try to, like, just kind of commit Sudoku to go back to the beginning of the, um, the dungeon. Sepoku? Sepoku. Sudoku. Sepoku. Or Harakiri, however you, like, say that. Harakiri. Harakiri. 